My name's Caleb. I go to West Seattle High School, and I'm in the 10th grade sophomore. I love reading, I love skateboarding, and recently I've learned to love coming to school. I like the most about Educarious uh, was how the whole class came together and worked on the project together. They introduced us to all the like technology that we got to use. I thought it was cool that you can share all your work online and other people would see it and comment on it. Getting feedback from experts I think was a great um, way to learn, be able to actually get the point of view of a scientist. When I come to school now, I'm actually happy to be here. Like, I want to be at school. The most important part of the Educurious experience has been a departure from traditional school. There are experts, there's technology. As part of our Educarious course design, we work hard to ensure that the units are aligned with both the Common Core State Standards and the Next Generation Science Standards framework. We develop units that focus on learning the basics of science and the basics of ELA. And so the fundamental approach we take is to utilize the research we know about how people learn and how learning progressions take place and incorporate that into all of our work. The educators units are based on a set of design principles. For example, we position students as developing experts. By doing that, the kids become more aware of a position of an expert and the way that they come to think. It's called cognitive apprenticeships. We also think it's very important that students need to be working on work that's relevant to them. Every unit is engaging students from the very beginning with a challenge. These days, opinions are everywhere. We give students assignments and tools and skills that they build up over the course of the unit to be able to deliver on the project. We've worked very hard to make every unit within the curriculum project-based. It really connects students with authentic work and it connects them with work they need to do in college and with professionals in the field, whatever that field might be. Educarious is a blended learning model that uses a delivery platform that incorporates social media and also curriculum and learning management systems. So kids retrieve content from it, sort of directions, uh, clips that we might be showing, uh, handouts, graphic organizers. Plus you get a lot more communication between students, between students and teachers, and students and experts. Something that you just typically don't get in schools. The technology really enabled us to just blow the walls of the classroom out, and the world came in. We read the book Girl Stolen, which is a mystery novel, to hook the kids into the genre of mystery and suspense writing. And we used the video about April Henry as a mystery writer to engage the kids in the whole task of figuring out what how writers create suspense. From watching like the April Henry videos, we learned techniques on like how to make a cliffhanger at the end of your story or like how to give pivotal artifacts so that like a, a reader can notice something and connect it to something else in the story. And we also learned about like sensory details in our story, how, how we can describe something so that the reader can actually visualize it. The students send their work out to experts in the field. So in this case, we were using mystery writers. And once the students started getting the actual real feedback from the experts, the, the light bulbs went on. The engagement level that the students reached because of the expert feedback, the writing stamina just went way up. And kids that hadn't, had, I could barely squeeze a page out of most of the year were writing three, four, five page narratives, which was amazing. The Josh Perfetto video helped them to think about their ability to do science in a real and relevant way in new settings. And when we coupled that with actually starting to work with some of that technology, the PCR machines and the pipetters, I think they could begin to conceptualize themselves as being scientists and not just students in a classroom.
The final DNA barcoding project proposal is due also on Friday at the latest. But the goal of the genetics unit is to engage students in contemporary issues of genetics to contextualize for students the various content that they're usually asked to learn in a traditional biology course. For example, students usually learn about DNA structure and function. We're actually having them extract DNA from various um, specimens that they're bringing in um, so that they can participate in a DNA barcoding project where they can actually identify the various species that are of interest to them. Okay, specifically, we research chicken and beef from Wendy's. We're taking the DNA out of natural cough drops to see if the herbs that they use in the cough drops are actually the herbs that they say on the list. After students have designed their initial study and posed their testable questions, then we send that work to experts for feedback. We also ask students to participate in uh, a citizen science project called Fold It to learn more about protein structure. Well, playing Fold It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> and like it's like a game, so you keep trying. I'm learning more about like what happens in a protein and like how so many different things can affect the way it ends up. We have our DNA sequences back. We want everybody in the class to look at them. Which one do I click on to get the sequence? The very last one. Yeah. Today, when they started to examine their DNA sequences, they had a few moments where they were figuring out what the DNA sequence looked like and how to put it into the databases. But as soon as they figured that out, they were obviously interested in what those specific species were. I think my students' thoughts about science and about careers in science have really changed. Being able to see what people work on in those careers, like, so then it's not so strange, it's not so scary, it's not so complicated, because it's forever explained to me. I get to do it myself, even though it's just a sample of what they do. Um, it helps me to understand. With high school, you, you really do have to keep your doors open, and this has definitely kept the door open for me. In this unit, picking up the clues, um, students really look at suspense. We ask how writers and directors bring people to the edge of their seats. We framed that unit with that question and had brought kids through a series of academic tasks from reading a suspenseful novel to uh, reading Edgar Allan Poe to actually writing their own suspenseful stories where they had to um, apply these, these ideas. Well, actually, when I read Edgar Allan Poe, it, uh... It, it changed my writing style almost dramatically. He wouldn't just say the ocean is blue, he would say the ocean is blue as well as it being wavy, it, uh, uh, turning with the winds as well as the moon. What I liked best about this unit was getting to work with the professional writers and um, being able to like, get messages from them and like, share my writing with them. The project for this unit is taking a narrative piece, a piece of fiction that kids have written, and transforming it into a script and then producing that script. So they're seeing the whole uh, trajectory of, of, of a piece of fiction moving into another medium. Picture Lock is due Thursday at 6 p.m. I came on in the second half of this project as a media teacher so that students now have spent some time writing their stories and I came on at the point where we changed those stories into scripts and helping students understand the difference between writing for the page and writing for the screen. Part about movie making is as much about compromise and learning how to solve problems as it is anything else. We learned about the theories of suspense and the elements of suspense. And basically, we tried really hard to incorporate all those stuff into our film, which I, it was interesting how it's so much harder to put it into a film rather than in writing. As an instructor, I get to learn from the educator's curriculum. I'm learning terms that I'd never heard about, you know, sensory details and, and, and pivotal artifacts and those things which I never had really used with my students before. So now they're hearing it from the Educurious curriculum, they're hearing it from their language arts teacher, the kids are hearing it from me now, and they heard it from the experts. So now the students are seeing that we're all working together on the same page, we have the same message, and suddenly it, it, it provides this focus for the students. Well, the group I teach is a group of students called Back on Track. 
Every single kid in there failed ninth grade language arts. We brought them together and we said, we're gonna do whatever we can to make you successful in school. Educurious has played an incredible role in getting these students engaged in their own learning, engaged in the world around them, um, engaged in reading. All the things that we hope that students would take away from our classes, Educurious has really allowed us to do with these students. Which one is more convincing? So we started off by reading The Hunger Games. We got hands-on with the book, and we discussed a lot about um, like the dystopian fiction and the archetypes of characters. The topic of my essay is relating how our modern-day society, how it can some, someday transform into a society that mirrors Pan Am. The topic for my essay, I didn't choose it, it chose me. Like, it was already an opinion that I really felt really strongly about. By the current political system. Students know from the very beginning where we're going. So if they're reading a book, or if they're writing a paper, or if they are having a conversation, every single thing, they see how it relates to where it is that they're going with their projects. The first feedback that I got was really great. The expert had said, she liked where I was going with it and she wanted me to keep writing. She'd asked if I had like a little bit like of experience beforehand, which was awesome. And <laughs> Probably the hardest part for me is writing the essay on the book because I really don't like writing essays, but this is a topic that I like and just liking the topic helps me and it, it motivates me to just get my work done, do it right, and really try harder than I normally would. I'm really excited to say that every single one of them will be back on track. And there are about five or six of them that have connected so much that they've chosen to take AP English next year. What I really appreciate about Educurious is that the rigor is intrinsic. It's, it's built into the materials that we're given them. It's built into the conversations. It's built into the assignments. Structuring the curriculum around projects helps students to connect the topics, the information they're learning with something that actually matters to them. And they then see a way that this enormous amount of information that they're learning is actually relevant. And that helps them remember it and know it and understand it. The most exciting thing that I've seen regarding Educurious in our classroom is that it provides the students with an opportunity to take their learning in, uh, into a broader context. It allows them to explore ideas in a more of a three-dimensional kind of model instead of just a flat, uh, you know, teacher in, student out kind of model. You saw a profound difference in the instructional practice and in the attitude of the kids towards their learning in, the, in that classroom. Working with this Educurious unit has really, honestly, altered my teaching practice probably forever. I can't imagine ever going back to what I did before. Well, what's really unique and special about Educurious is that I really um, have been looking for something, a different way to challenge students and, and give students a different experience in their schooling. And this program fits into how I think we need to reinvent high schools.